One of my biggest pet peeves when it comes to creating content and consuming content is when the white balance is wrong. And it's very easy to make this mistake, and so a lot of people do, and it's very annoying when you're working with somebody who gets their white balance wrong and you have to fix it later, or you're watching something and it has a terrible white balance. The colors just don't look right, doesn't look real. If you don't know what white balance is, it's just making sure that the whites in the scene look white, making sure that the camera is set appropriately. Now, there are times to break this rule of getting your white balance correct, but in general, I think it's a good place to start. While the human eye is able to adjust and compensate for differences in white balance, the best example I can think of is if you ever go skiing or snowboarding and you wear tinted goggles, that let's say they're orange tinted goggles, your eyes will adjust and your brain will get used to looking at snow through these orange tinted goggles and you'll think, okay, that's what white looks like because it's snow. The moment you take the goggles off and you remove the orange filter, now everything looks incredibly blue. That is the human biological example of white balance where cameras do something similar and you can set it manually. Most cameras make this really easy and I'm sure you're probably already familiar with the different white balance settings. There's tungsten, daylight, fluorescent, shade, cloudy. A lot of cameras have these presets built in or you can dial in your own white balance using a Kelvin scale. And that's what I always did, thinking that, well, daylight is 5600, so I'm gonna set my Kelvin to 5600 and my white balance will be correct. Or I'm filming with tungsten lights and I know tungsten is 3200 on the Kelvin scale, so I'll set my white balance to 3200. And this gets you close to having that perfect white balance, but it can also lead to a lot of trouble if you're dialing it in manually. First of all, it's very slow to set the white balance that way, and you're always left with this little bit of imprecision where a light might say it's 5300, but in actuality, it's closer to 54 or 52. So you miss the mark ever so slightly. You also run into issues when you're talking about the lens on the camera. Almost every lens is going to introduce its own personal characteristics and aesthetics to your footage. So one lens might read at 5200, while another lens might read at 5400 on that Kelvin scale. And your white balance, if you're leaving it constant and you're switching lenses, is going to be changing ever so slightly. Even though the light hasn't changed, nothing else has changed, just by changing the lens on your camera, it's going to change what that white balance should be. So to fix all this, I've embraced the practice of setting a custom white balance using a white balance reference. Most cameras nowadays will let you take a picture of something that is white to set your white balance. And this solves so many problems for both the individual camera, solves the lens issue. So even if you switch a lens, you switch a filter, you just take a new picture and you set your new white balance and everything is perfect. This also addresses the issue of syncing to different cameras. If I have camera A and I set it to 5600 and I have camera B and I set it to 5600, they're not always gonna match. Again, because the lenses are often different and it's just the nature of using two different devices. They're going to be slightly different. If you want them perfectly in sync, you take a picture of your white balance reference source. When you use a color reference, you can have two cameras look identical. And this is my biggest nitpick of any kind of amateur or independent or low budget production. They'll use two different cameras and nine times out of 10, the white balance between them will be wrong and it's very distracting. One will be slightly warm, one will be slightly cool, one will be slightly magenta, one will be slightly green, and it breaks the immersion. Well, what do these color sources look like? Well, the first and free option is usually a white wall, a white sheet of paper, a napkin, a salt shaker, Anything that's white in the scene that you want to look white, just take a white balance reference photo of that image, of that thing, and you're set. This is not the best way to do it, but it's the free and easy way to do it. It will take a little bit extra time, five seconds, 10 seconds, versus setting the white balance yourself. But when you do this, you know your white balance is perfect. A lot of people will say, well, I'll just fix my white balance in post. No, God! No! That takes so much extra time in manually white balancing two different cameras, getting them to match perfectly in post-production costs you hours, if not days. Whereas you can just get it right on set and it takes you a matter of five seconds, 10 seconds, just to do it right the first time. Other people will say, well, that's why I shoot raw, so I can just change it later and dial it in exactly. Again, taking more time, making things less efficient. If you have the blessing of working with a colorist who can afford to spend weeks or months working on a project, then great, shoot raw and have that person work as much as they want. But I think a lot of us need the speed workflow from start to finish, getting things right through that pipeline so there's no bottlenecks or barriers to making something look its best. 
There are situations where I will take a color reference off of a wall because I'm in an environment with a white-ish wall. Maybe it's a little off-white, maybe a little bit yellow, but I want it to look white for the aesthetics of the piece. So I'll white balance off the wall, making sure that that reference is white, according to the camera. But more often, I'm using tools to help me achieve perfect white balance, and they are a little bit of an investment, but frankly, in the grand scheme of things, it's not that much, and I think it's totally worth it. This is a type of tool you can use for white balance, but the results for me have been hit or miss. You basically put this in front of the lens, so it's kind of a nice personal thing you can do just as the camera operator. You slide this in front of the lens and you take a picture, and it supposedly will give you a white balance of the scene, taking all light sources into consideration. This would be good for something run and gun where you're not really sure what the lighting's gonna be. Maybe it's mixed lighting and it's kind of all over the place. This might get you by in a pinch if you really need something that just kind of gets you close enough. But for me, I found this tool to be not all that great. It's fine, it does its job, but I think the results can be better. The nice thing about these is they're really, really cheap. I think this is like $10, $7, something like that. There's large color checker cards that you can get, and these do work, and I use this for quite a while. The nice thing about these is that you don't have to be quite as close to the camera to use them because they're a bigger reference, but I find that this size just really doesn't work for me all that well. It's not something I can put in my pocket and carry with me. I have to have it in my bag, and so I will use it from time to time if I need a bigger source, but there's an even better solution than this. This is the color checker video from Calibrate, and I really, really like this. You can use this panel to set your focus, this panel to set your white balance, and you have a color chip chart on the back if you wanna take it a step further to match different color profiles between different cameras. I usually don't really do that, but you can if you want to, and you finally have an exposure list so you can set perfect exposure based on these color bars. You can also set exposure using the white balance one. So what I end up using for the most part is the white balance one. That's why I made this video. This thing is kind of expensive. I think it was like $150 for a piece of plastic with some color chips. You don't need to do that. Like I said, you can use a piece of paper, you can use a wall, you can use a salt shaker, you can use different tools that are cheaper, but I really like this one because it fits right in my pocket and I can take it with me anywhere. And now I have something that is my investment in getting perfect white balance. And I will tell you, if I have two different cameras using two different lenses, using different filters, if you set a custom white balance using something like this or any of the other solutions I mentioned, you will have perfect white balance every single time. The one thing to consider is that white balance will change depending on the angle of the light and which light you're actually picking up on this chip. So you do have to get used to how you place this in the scene and whether you're pointing it at the sun or into the shade, that angle does matter. But once you get the hang of it, it's pretty easy and intuitive to set your white balance every time. And I think this only takes me probably five seconds on set to get my white balance right. And then I never have to worry about it later. I'm never struggling in post-production, trying to match two different cameras between two different scenes. It's never an issue. I just set it and I get it right every time. And I think it's well worth the $150 investment or whatever the price is right now. If you wanna buy one of these, I will put a link to it in the description so you can go check it out. Maybe you find something better that you like instead. Everyone has different priorities and preferences, but for me, this has solved every white balance issue I could ever have. And it's really frustrating when I watch content and people don't get their white balance right because they're not using something like this or like I said, a simple piece of paper. Thanks for watching. Let me know what you think. Are you like I used to be where you're still dialing in your white balance using the Kelvin scale manually? Have you found a better tool than one of these? Let me know. I'd love to hear it in the comments.